Racers ready! Welcome to Azenjun for the second round of the World Downhill Skateboarding Championship. This event marks the grand finale with two back-to-back -back races at a thrilling new venue. Not only does this round bring a change in location, but it also introduces innovative formats, taking the sport to new heights. Over the weekend, enthusiasts can look forward to not just one, but two races on both Saturday and Sunday. We've had such a good time, uh, all good clean fun. Thank you for uh, enabling us to come here, just skate such an awesome hill. Nestled in the northeast of Turkey, Erzincan is a city surrounded by majestic mountains, preserving its rich history and natural beauty throughout the years. Known as an extreme sports hub, Erzincan boasts activities like rafting, paragliding, snowboarding and skiing during the winter months. Ergyanda, the venue for this year's downhill skateboarding races, is also undergoing development as a new ski resort area, anticipated to attract numerous visitors in the coming years. If you look around, it looks like a beautiful area, apparently a ski resort in the winter, and I'm a snowboarder myself, so I've been seeing some lines already, and I think I actually want to come back in winter to see it in snowy conditions and go snowboard the hills around. The location features gondolas facilitating riders' ascent from the finish line back to the start area. With the unwavering support of Governor Hamza Aydoğdu, Erzincan is propelling the sport to new heights, offering riders a warm welcome and accommodations at the esteemed Hilton Hotel. The hotel is nice, good breakfast, so <laughs> I'm happy about that. That's uh, again something we have to think, don't think about, so we can focus on the race and focus on uh, performing as good as possible. Adyanda's 3.2 kilometer road is highly technical and exceptionally fast, featuring 12 turns with the notorious corner number six posing a significant challenge for every rider. I think like this is unprecedented. I mean, I've been told there have been other events at ski resorts, but nothing of this scale. Um, people were saying Vulcan in Transylvania. I haven't been there. Uh, they say it's steeper and faster in here, but then some guys have been there, so they find this track more challenging. And, uh, you know, with, uh, it's three kilometers long and, you're, you're, like I said, you're constantly thinking about, you know, two to three turns ahead and how to set them up because it's really fast. Uh, I just hit 101 kilometers per hour on the, on the previous run. It's really fast. It's, uh, it's insane. I think I never skated on a road like this. So it's, uh, I'm happy we have this day to practice, to get used to the speed, to get used to the corners. Uh, but it's definitely a top racetrack and it's, uh, I said it's uh, Vulcan on steroids, steroids, it's like, yeah, it's really quick, it's really beautiful and uh, I'm a bit scared for it but that's healthy, healthy nerves I think. This event will showcase 30 riders from 18 different nations competing across open street luge, open skate men and women's skateboard categories. This program will bring you all the action from the first race of the Open Street Luge and Women's Stand-Up Skate category. But before the races in Azenjan, let's take a look back at the first round of the WDSC in Lucena, Italy in all categories. A remarkable assembly of 90 riders from Europe, as well as far-reaching places like Australia, New Zealand, Malaysia, Canada, America, Peru and Brazil has converged on the charming village of Nusenna in Tuscany, Central Italy. Their mission to conquer a challenging 1.5 kilometer course that promises to push their skills to the limit, marking the beginning of their championship pursuits. This year, a lot of people have stepped up. There's Louis from Peru, 
uh, Martin from Germany, Albert from Germany, Andre from Czech, who got last first last year in Kazakov. So this year it's it's not going to be just a it's not going to be easy this year. It's now having a target on my back definitely changes the dynamics, but I'm I'm excited for it. Every race is a challenge when the field is so high in terms of level, and uh, yeah, excited to see what this one brings. It's extremely competitive. So sometimes I mean you tend to get a range of levels within skateboarding, right? You know, you, you can't have a hundred amazing riders often at a track, but all the ladies who have joined this competition. Uh, have a very high school level, so you know you, you're going to go in a corner and you're going to see a lot of action. So it's going to be really, uh, really exciting, I think. Right? In the open stand-up category, Spain's Ponsolet stood out last season, winning two out of three events, facing strong challenges from top ten riders, including the number two from France, Yanis Markarian, Switzerland's world number three Gregoire Schwab, and Australia's Harry Clark. Ponsolet aims for a winning start. In the women's stand-up category, Malaysia's Grace Wong, Belgian Yasmin Hanegraaff, and German Miriam Weisschuch resumed their great rivalry after dominating the podium in 2022. The street luge category featured the world's top six, led by defending champion Madzan from Malaysia, with strong rivals like Spaniard Mikel Echegaray and the consistent Canadian Colby Parks. At the first round of the World Downhill Skateboarding Championship in Lucena, Italy, Spain's Diego Ponsole dominated the timesheets during qualifying, setting the pace with an impressive time of 1 minute 21.603 seconds. France's Alexandros Tsuganakis showcased his prowess, securing the second position with a remarkable time of 1 minute 22.740 seconds. In the women's category, Dutch rider Lisa Peters was the fastest, posting a time of 1 minute 30.007 seconds. Malaysia's Abdel Majdan backed his world number one ranking in luge, posting the best time of 1 minute 24.206 seconds. The road is how it is, you can't change it, there's cracks in the road everywhere. You just gotta race it, you just gotta firm it. You just gotta take it how it is and just try and race it the best you can. And uh, this is one of the first time we have a track uh, we don't finish with a straight line. So it's not with your weight, it's just with your technical. And it's going to be really difficult for the race because it's narrow, uh, the pavement is not the best. Just there's some cracks on the road with anxiety to the road. Um, sometimes the perfect line is exactly where a crack is. So you have to decide, do I go over and have the chance to maybe crash because of it? Or do I decide to take the line around and see what happens then. However, the following day brought unexpected challenges. Safety concerns arose during the elimination rounds, forcing a temporary halt to the race. I'm not risking anybody else's life here. I saw it, I saw it with my own eyes, these guys saw it with their own eyes. They have got the same gut feeling as me. So I've spoken with the rider, well with the right, well with Harry and a few of the other top riders, along with Celine and Chris. And it is unfortunate that we have to do it. But at the end of the day, the most important thing is that we can give you a safe event. Regrettably, the situation with the local organizer could not be remedied, and the event was subsequently abandoned, redirecting the focus and anticipation toward the upcoming doubleheader in Arzinjan. As we enter the climactic second and final doubleheader round of the World Downhill Skateboarding Championship, the stage is set for the crowning of world champions. In the street luge category, five men are competing in the first round of the WDSC in Arzinjan. Leading the pack is Malaysia's Abdul Majdan, the defending world champion who secured victory in the last round in Turkey in 2022, earning the title for the first time ever and poised to add yet another championship to his career. And since the field is not so large, um, I think, you know, um, we don't have to go really aggressive. But, you know, um, there's a couple of guys out here that would still be looking, in, uh, looking out for. Um, I think they're uh, gunning for me. Last year's fourth place finisher, David Frega of France, is another contender. Unfortunately, he couldn't race in the first event in Arzinja due to lost equipment during his flight. 
Andrew Spate from Great Britain is also a man to watch. Last year he impressed on the field at the last round in Turkey, finishing in the fourth spot. This year his aim is to secure a podium win overall. The biggest rival, as always, everybody knows is Abdil. But that isn't to say that on this sort of track anything can happen. Everybody who's been riding out, riding out has been setting some really good times. Joining the tour this year are new faces, including Arkadiusz Kowalski from Poland, Luis Mogrejevo from Peru, and Daniel Blanco from Argentina. They bring fresh energy to the tour and are ready to elevate the competition to new heights. In the women's open skate category, two standout names are in the field. Last year's two-round winner, Yasmin Hanegraaff from Belgium and Lisa Peters from the Netherlands. Previous race we were with way more girls, now we are with uh, two girls, so we will race twice. On Saturday we have three qualification runs and then we have a race, so it will be the two of us, head to head. So I think it's still really excited even though we're with the two of us. And then on Sunday will be the same, uh, qualifying based on time and then again a head to head race and I guess we can also skate open. So I mean I hope I can get a bit more race experience on this track by joining the boys. It's still going to be interesting, it's going to be an actual dual head to head race, win it or lose it. So still interesting but I like the format with four people, it makes it more interesting, there's way more interaction. So yeah, it is what it is now and let's see how the day will, what the day will bring us. The field is brimming with talent, anticipation and a shared determination to etch their names into the history of the WDSC. Malaysia's Abdelmajan showcased his dominance in today's official qualifying in Azerbaijan, clocking an impressive 2 minute 23.19 second run down the challenging 3.2 kilometer 12 turn Adganda course. Mazan appears to be the odds-on favorite heading into this afternoon's knockout rounds and the first of two finals scheduled for this weekend. Uh, it's a little bit dusty, but you know I think as the, we're taking more runs, all our wheels are just you know sweeping the dirt off the road naturally as we ride it, and uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's it's pretty. Uh, the grip is not so bad. I like it. The defending Luge World Champion asserted his authority from the outset, nailing his best time on the opening run. He topped the timesheets by over five seconds, leaving Poland's Arkadiusz Kowalski in second place with a best time of 2 minutes 28.89 seconds. Following closely is Britain, Andrew Spate, who posted a time of 2 minutes 32.54 seconds, securing the third quickest position. Absolutely fantastic is this, probably the best event I've been to and I've heard a lot of the other competitors say exactly the same. Both a very fast track, running over 100 kilometres an hour in two places and also a very technical track, so some very tight corners as well. Argentina's Daniel Blanco made a competitive run of 2 minutes, 32.40 seconds, placing him in 5th position. Unfortunately, this means he couldn't secure a spot in the finals for the first day in Azerbaijan. Now it's time for the women's final featuring Yasmin Hanegraaff from Belgium and Lisa Peters from the Netherlands. As the women's final kicks off, Lisa makes a blistering start, taking the lead from the first corner, with Yasmin following closely in second place. Yasmin struggles to make a good turn, but refuses to let Lisa open a gap, pushing hard to close the distance. The intensity increases as they approach corner number three, with Yasmin closing the gap between her and Lisa. Navigating the challenging corner number six, Yasmin inches closer to Lisa and now they are neck and neck. The question arises, can Yasmin pass Lisa? 
but no, Yasmin pushes too hard and dives into the hay bales. Yasmin is okay, but Lisa takes advantage of the situation and opens a constant gap. Despite Yasmin's efforts to catch up, she faces another setback, crashing into the hay bales once again. In the last two corners, Lisa navigates confidently, entering the last stretch. Yes, she does it. Lisa Peters wins the first race of the women's final. The results, Lisa Peters finishes first. Jasmine Hanegraaff takes the second spot. It was cool. Jazzy was, um, I pushed up first. Jazzy was behind me and I knew she was not that far away. And I'm like regular, so I have my left foot front and she's goofy. So there's one corner where we take a completely different line. Like I slide pretty early and then I do a second one and she only does one. So I knew she was close, so she overtook there. Uh, but she slided too late and crashed herself out, unfortunately. So yeah, the rest of the race I was alone. Yeah. I took it a bit chill, <laughs> like safe lines. Um, but yeah, of course, I'm happy, first place. Uh, so we had the finals between me and Lisa. We were actually pretty close to each other. Uh, at some point I even overtook Lisa. Uh, but then, sadly, I didn't make it through the corner. I crashed, uh, tried to catch up, uh, but I didn't make it anymore. But let's see, tomorrow is another chance and maybe I'll manage to win there. They head to the podium as the competitors celebrate the competition with the locals through traditional dances. Amsterdam! Turkey! Turkey! Ertin Chantukia, race one, Bumas and Abskebar. Now it's time for the Luge final. Abdul Madzan with red leggings and a lane advantage. Arkadiusz Kowalski with green, Andrew Spate in blue, and Luis Mogroyevo in yellow. The race is about to start with Governor Hamza Aydodo starting the gun. Settled for the luge final. And the race is on. Adil Mazan with great arm work takes the lead with Andrew Spate in second, Arkadiusz Kowalski in third, and Luis Mogrejevo in fourth. Kowalski attempts to make a move on Spate at the beginning of the race, but Spate holds his ground. Mazan leads the field with impressive speed and skill, opening a significant gap. As the race progresses, the battle intensifies between Spate and Kowalski. On the fourth corner, Kowalski gains momentum but can't find an opening as Spate maintains his speed.
coming to corner number six. Matzad manages to come around the corner perfectly. However, State struggles to make the turn and piles into the hay bales. With Spate's crash, Kowalski moves into second spot, chasing Madzan and Mogoyevo in third. Spate manages to continue the race, but he is very far from the rest of the field. Coming to corner number eight, Madzan leads the field securely and Kowalski in second. Mogrejevo is still in third place while Kowalski opens the gap with Mogrejevo. Last corner and Abdul Madza nails it! He finishes the race in first place and wins the first of two races in Azerbaijan. Second is Arkadiusz Kowalski, third is Luis Mogrejevo, and fourth position goes to Andrew Spate. It was good. Um, I had the inside lane, so I pushed out in front, um, but I could see the others also having a good start. Um, I think Andy, uh, who was in lane three, managed to outpush the others uh, next to him. Um, but I pushed out in front and stayed out in front and just rode clean line, smooth, trying to keep my wheels gripped on the course um, all over. And uh, yeah, just concentrated on um, Staying out in front. These have been some intense days. I had a lot of cramps during the weekend, so it was hard to get that final race done, but it was really good. It was a tough competition, and I'm glad that I came from Peru here to compete and, and to be on this amazing event. So, cheers to everybody, cheers to the organization, and I'm so happy for my podium. Thank you guys. This concludes the action on the first day in Azenjan as riders celebrate with locals joining in their traditional dances. See you for the second day's action in the next episode.